everyone, Steve with Newegg TV here, and today we're going to talk about Microsoft Server 2012 R2 and the three categories of build combos Newegg has set up with Microsoft. In an effort to ease the selection process of your first or possibly your next server, we've created three tiers of server builds. First is good, that's entry level, followed by better, which utilizes server class components, and finally best, which is the best bet for admins that want to have or need heavy virtualization. So, the entry level servers provide an inexpensive build option that's uh, pretty much less than $1,000. The better level steps you up to server class components for less than $2,500. And the top tier servers are intended for those that want the maximum performance out of their servers using virtualization. Now, all of these components were hand picked and discounted for the bundle. Check out the link in the description below if you're interested in purchasing them. But for now, let's watch the interview. Hey everybody, you're watching New Egg TV. I'm Steve and joining me in the studio today, I have Eric from Microsoft. Eric, how you doing, man? I'm doing well, Steve. Awesome. I mean, I'm in such a good mood. We get to All talk right? about building servers today. <laughs> That's awesome, we absolutely do. Yeah. And to that point, guys, we're actually gonna do two different videos. This particular one is going to be on an entry-level uh, server, so you can basically jump in and get started depending on the size of your business. But more on that in just a moment. We should probably talk a little bit about Windows Server 2003 end of support, and maybe one of the main reasons why someone would want to start a new system build, right? Sure, exactly. So Windows Server 2003 support is ending July 14th, 2015. The Department of Homeland Security Computer, Computer Emergency Readiness Team has issued an alert issuing all customers to move off of Windows Server 2003. Um, after the end of support date, there won't be any more uh, updates for the operating system. And this yeah. has you know security implications, compliance implications if people are uh, subject to PCI compliance, like if they accept credit cards, mm -hmm. um, there's you know, you're probably going to fail a compliance test, uh, a PCI compliance test. Right. HIPAA, um, in, in the healthcare industry, if you're subject to HIPAA compliance, you're probably going to fail a uh, HIPAA compliance audit yeah, if, you if you're running go, an unsupported OS. Right, and, and if you can't protect someone's information, obviously you're going to fail right there because less secure, right? Absolutely. Well, it makes a good point. Um, well, the next thing we should probably jump into is why someone would want to buy their own system or build their own system versus probably buying a system, sure. right? So what's maybe a, uh, the first concern that you should, you should con think of, I guess? So, you know, the reason to build your own server mm -hmm. is a lot of the same reason why you would want to build your own desktop. Right. You get to choose the parts you want, um, pay for the redundancy that you want, not pay for not pay for things that you don't want. Mm -hmm. So you really get to customize the system to be exactly what you'd like. You can save money in areas that you want. You can spend where you want. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, definitely love building my own system. And I love Me the too. customizability of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in this particular case, though, we've actually thrown together a system for you guys. So uh, the, the uh, build team has actually thrown together a couple different options just to make sure that it's available for you. All right, Eric, so maybe we should talk a little bit more about uh, what this entry-level server build has in terms of hardware considerations. Now, I'm assuming that price is probably the main point we want to hit, uh, but you can also, aside from build your own system, also purchase a pre-built system, but, but go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. When, when you're building your own system, you know, one of the reasons to do so is you save a lot of money. Right. Right, so you can always go and buy a server and you know Newegg sells HP and Lenovo servers that are great and then they're supported by HP and Lenovo. If you want to build your own, you'll save a lot of money. You'll give up you'll give up support, uh, but you'll get to build exactly what you want, which appeals to a lot of people. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you on that, especially when I, I like to learn a lot about what my trade is by doing more of it in a deep, maybe pushing my experiences, or obviously a lot of you out there are IT or you're building these systems for your, your office already. I would recommend then building a system just because then you know the ins and out of it, ins and outs of it. Obviously, more responsibility there, but if you're comfortable with that and it's a small office like this is intended to do, I think that that's completely doable. Exactly. I think it gives you a lot of confidence in um, your server to know that you built it. You know exactly how it works. You know exactly how much expandability you have mm -hmm. and what you have to work with from a hardware perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. So maybe we should talk a little bit more about uh, hardware. I mean, obviously, we can choose which redundancy we 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 have, right? Right. Uh, can you speak more to those types of points? Sure. So you know, with server class hardware, you can get redundancy in power supplies, in hard drives in network interface cards. Um, there's a lot more redundancy built in. Um, and you can really choose 
you know, this good system that doesn't have as much redundancy, or you can choose the better system that has full redundancy, or you can choose somewhere in the middle um, to really let you spend money where you want the redundancy and save money where you don't. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Uh, aside from spending the money on, on redundancy in general, uh, what other hardware considerations do you think users should be taking in mind when they're building their own system? So form factor is important. Do I need a tower? Do I need a rack? Uh, in, the, in the good system, we've got a tower specified. Okay. In the better system, it's a rack. Okay. Uh, you also want to look at storage expandability, right? How many um, SATA ports are on my motherboard? How many uh, uh, power supplies for hard drives are coming out of my power supply? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how many PCI slots do I have if I'm going to need those? Um, so expandability is important uh, mm -hmm. w w when you're building a server. Uh, so the number of users, I mean, what would this server be recommended for? I mean, obviously every workload might be a little different, but uh, generally speaking, what would you recommend for the good system build that we're recommending? Right, so it's a hard question because all, all servers are used a little bit differently. Right. Um, the OS has a hard limit of 25 users, okay. um, but I would say in the range of five to 15 users, you can comfortably use this server for things like file sharing and backup and remote access and okay. uh, running a few applications. Okay. Yeah. So, and this is of course Windows Essential, Windows Server, Microsoft Server Ex Essentials Edition. That's is what right. we're talking about specifically. Right. But if you wanted to have more uh, expandability, let's say I'm at 20 uh, clients right now in my office uh, in terms of the users on that server, when, when should I, what should I be purchasing right now? So standard edition is the next step up okay. from Essentials Edition. You can have as many users as you need. You just need to buy a client access license for each user, okay. and you can have unlimited users. Okay, so there's expandability, at least in terms of users. Absolutely. Fantastic. Okay, perfect. So maybe we should actually give you guys a link so that you know where you can purchase or what you can purchase. We have a, a couple different options. Uh, the link should be showing up here on the screen, or it'll be in the description below. Uh, can you can you tell me a little bit more about Essentials Edition functionality, just for our users? Sure. Essentials Edition is a low-cost edition. It's really made for small companies that are getting their first server, mm. right? They, and they, they don't see themselves growing beyond 25 users anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But they need um, they need a server for the things I mentioned. You know. Um, client backup, remote access, installing some lightweight uh, business applications, um, and maybe a few other things. Okay. So Essentials Edition makes it very easy to manage the server. It has a dashboard for doing user management and setting up all, all the things that I just mentioned. It also has a way that you can connect to Office 365 okay. and keep your users in sync if you want to run email in the cloud or file sharing in the cloud or any other Office 365 functionality. So in general, Essentials Edition is the best OS for a small company that's really getting into their first server. Um, and then Standard Edition will be the step up. Fantastic. Yep. Well, to that point, guys, I should probably mention that the next video that we're doing is going to be on the better version, right? Build a Server right. Better Edition. So stay tuned for that video also coming up. But Eric, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today. Thanks, my friend. Appreciate no it. Thank you guys also for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.